Okay, it is time. So we're going to go ahead and start. Thank you very much again for attending the Aruba training mobility session. Um, I'm going to give the lead to Andre, uh, which is our presenter today. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, um, thank you very much for being here and we're going to share the today's session. So today's session has to do with Wi-Fi 6. So we have some 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 things to cover and to remember. And uh, before we start, it's it's nice to remind that we are here for you. And if you have any other topic you want or any specific or special support that we can provide for your end customers or for your uh, for your technicals or, or or sales engineer, please don't forget to you, you can reach Erica and, and and Oscar and we'll be happy to include more topics. Now, one thing that we have to cover here is Wi-Fi six. Today we're going to talk about Wi-Fi six. And Oscar, do we have do do we have a, a do, do we have a questions in the end for the Kahoot? Today? Uh, good, yes, good morning, uh, Andre. Yes, uh, at the end of the session, we're going to have the chance to win an Amazon Amazon car, Amazon gift card uh, with using Kahoot tool. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that that that's great. So um, try try to pay attention to some to some details because in the end we will have a uh, um, a questions and 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 uh, which you can get, you can win uh, Amazon. If you pay attention to some details of this of this webinar, so let's begin. We are here to discuss the the, the Wi-Fi six benefits and Wi-Fi Wi-Fi six way of deployments, and we we are not we are not new in 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 this in this in this field. I mean that everybody of us know that every day we have more devices coming to the Wi-Fi network, and the Wi-Fi network is not just a a nice to have platform. The Wi-Fi that we provide in Aruba is, is, is a mobility platform that you can rely that access to the network to be the main the, the main platform for your work workers. So yeah, we need more Wi-Fi performance, of course. We need them to be secure. Yes, and, and, and a great thing about Aruba is that we have improved the security levels in our networks, but without reach, uh, reaching more complexity in the process. So it's, it's a nice way that that it's a nice way that you can have peace in mind that having secure networks, but don't have that com a very complex setup for that security. And we're going to talk that about. Okay, so we are going to start. One of the main components of Wi-Fi 6, whenever you hear Wi-Fi 6, my friends, you have to remember that this, this Wi-Fi 6 is a new term about how to refer for the boring, do, do, do you remember this naming convention? It was, it was really boring, nailed to that 11, and then some letters over here. For example, we have N, and then we have AC, and then we have AC version 2. Okay, so Wi-Fi 6, whenever you hear that, is because they are referring to the newest standard, AO2.11AX. This AX is going to give you a lot of improvements. Not, not you, you have to be aware that um, from the previous amendments in the Wi-Fi standard, every new generation of Wi-Fi standard was relating to the speed, and every Every year, we are we we are used to connect to a, a faster speeds transmit rates in our Wi-Fi networks. But you know what? Wi-Fi six is not only about the speed. Wi-Fi six brings you good good performance for the five gigahertz band and for to the two point four gigahertz band. Because uh, in in the previous in the previous uh, generations of Wi-Fi, you have remember that you have more than one gig per second. Remember that you can have in your access point up to two gigabits per second, 
Yeah, but that that worked only for five gigahertz devices. And for the IoT devices and for the all all, all the other clients that need connectivity in 2.4, that, that kind of was a, a forgotten land. Now AX brings you more performance, yeah, more speed, yeah. But the, you are going to have more devices even able to transmit together. I'm going to get rid of my notes and let's start by by this specific up update in Wi-Fi 6. OFDM. The O is for orthogonal and, and that is a, a way that we do in, in, in math. When you have vectors that doesn't interfere to each other, that is orthogonal. So the, yeah, we, we have this, this, this technology in the past, yes, we have it. But the new thing is that this, this transmission and this in, encoding system and this modulation scheme are going to make able that you have more people transmitting together without causing conditions. Why? Because in the previous version of Wi-Fi, you have a lot of devices trying to transmit, but only one could transmit at the time. So whenever your access point had one transmission opportunity, every transmission opportunity was one device at the time. Because it was not completely multiplexing the, the, the transmission and reception. Okay. So if you want to if you want to have a more technical deep dive, I, I just will I, I just will uh, give you this 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 concept. You see, here client one is transmitting, here client two is transmitted over the air, and then we have a dead space here. This was known as the interframe spacing. So what, what am I what, what am I mean? Uh, here, here is my point. Between the transmissions of every client, you have to dedicate some 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 empty air because you want to make sure that nobody was to go. Uh, you have no collisions in the air. So the only way that you can avoid collision is 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 one client at the time transmitting or receiving and between each transmission you have this dead space in the air because you want to have that that space in between frames that was the old transmission now whenever you hear that wi-fi 6 in aruba give you of the of the ma is this concept you see this is one single transmission opportunity so i have one, two, three, four, five, five clients transmitting at the time in this example, and all of them, all of them are moving traffic. So I can have multiple clients transmitting in a single transmission opportunity, and these interframe spacings, this dead air, this empty space in between every transmission is is not that time consuming anymore is not you're going to have a more a more resources for your for your users transmissions and this is great because whenever we want to improve uh voice over ip whenever we want to improve unified communications when it, if you have a customer that for example has a contact center and wants to rely that contact center in 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 wireless transmission you can do it for sure because the all the transmission will be will be able to be done and they will not interfere to each other. So that is the first that is the first new update about Wi-Fi 6. Okay. So we we have more. We have more. Another technology that was in the past but was improved in this Wi-Fi 6 standard is that okay. In 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 Wi-Fi 6, we have multiple user transmission. So this is your access point here, and, and this will be Wi-Fi 5. Okay. 
Wi-Fi 5 is the, is the AC in previous versions, okay? So Wi-Fi 5 gave you the opportunity to talk to multiple users at the time. So if you have a transmission opportunity, you have a, a single time, a single uh, spaces and all that you can that you can take advantage to talk to multiple clients. You can you could do it, but you know what? You could do it only on the down direction, on the downlink direction, from the access point to the client. But when the clients answer or transmit back to the access point, you had to do it one by one. So you were able to send information to multiple clients at the same time? Yes. But when those multiple clients wanted to reply back to the access point, you had to attend those replies one by one. So yes, you have multiple user, yes, communication, of course. But you didn't have what Wi-Fi 6 is offering you. And just 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 a, a timeout here. This Wi-Fi 6 downlink and uplink multiple user communications, my friends, is available to you in access points 535 and superiors, okay? Because you're talking about extreme high density or uh, super high density environment. So yeah, just, just a time out because I know that it's important that every comment that we do in the technical field, we have to know how to translate that into, into the proper design of our project. So please remember this, OFDM, OFDMA, the, the previous feature we saw, is available on all the 500 families. But this multiple user up, uplink and downlink transmissions is available on the 535 and superiors, okay? What can I mean? What, what do I mean is that if you have a 535, if you have a 550, you will have uplink and downlink multiple user transmission. If you have any other access point, like the 300 family, for example, or the, the entry 500 families, they are going to give you just the normal uplink behavior. Okay? So think about that when you have a, a, a real high density environment where multiple people are trying to work in, in, in heavy applications at the time or you have multiple users requirements for bandwidth, think of the model of your access point as well if you have to offer your customer a switch-like experience, okay? So right now, we are very close to offer full duplicates in the air, okay? Uh, when when we have the new standard Wi-Fi 7 in some, some couple of years, you will have no difference between a switch transmission over the wire and a Wi-Fi transmission over the air, okay? But for now, think that Aruba is giving you the, the, the technology now in the present to have uplink and downlink multiplication multiplication for these heavy heavy duty environments okay good so far so good no questions all yeah. is clear right now andre thank yeah. you thank you oscar okay so we have seen how those frames over the year are going to be accommodated and, and, and transmitted to, to allow multiple people to transmit. And then we have seen the, the, the new generation of MUMIMO because it's opening and downing and Wi-Fi 6. And now we are going to remember that it's not just speed. Okay. Sorry, Andre. Why? I missed a yes, question sir. From, from Judy Morales. 
uh, she is mm -hmm. asking uh, the client the client has to be capable of Wi-Fi six, right? Uh, this advantage don't apply to Wi-Fi five user devices. Oh yes, that, that that is the second part of the of this. Yes, yes, great, great, great question, Judy. When we talk about these benefits, we know that the AX should the AX technology or the Wi-Fi six technology should be present in the access point we provide and in the client devices we are connected. That's completely correct, Judy. Thank you. But the, the good news are that every year we, we saw more, more devices AX capable. And I, I think this 2020 will be the last year where we have to worry about the the, 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 the capabilities of the, of the client because uh, I give you an example. For us to reach uh, the AO2.11 AC clients, this took around four years or three years, okay? But my friends, for, for AX client devices become more popular and popular every day, we are very close to do that, okay? So yeah, even though you need an AP and a client that are ready for AX, the good thing is that if you start, this is not future anymore. You can start building your own network in Wi-Fi 6 and, and be ready for, for the explosion of, of the next year and, and devices of AX. So Andre, today the, 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 yes. the wi sorry, the Wi-Fi 5 device have any advantage using Wi-Fi 6 networks or they just going to connect to the Wi-Fi 5 version in the same AP? Yeah, the, the, that, is, that, is another, that is another good question. AX is completely backwards compatible with AC. So they, they are completely two different standards, but any AC client right now will be completely able to connect with issues to the AX access points. Even even you you will not have the even even you will not have the benefits for some specific transmission. But remember that there are no some technology that are, like we are watching today some technology are very um, client specific uh, technology but my friends if you have ax in your in your network right now you will be experiencing for example these ones okay for example these ones for example all the technology that regard uh, is regarding the access point uh, architecture and advantages will be present because some technology will be benefit only for the access point to better coordinate and send the transmission. So yeah, you are having those benefits right now. If your if your client is AC, your client will be connecting to the AX access point and talk the same AC benefits. But yeah, the customers and access point should be AX. If you now have your own network in AX, you're going to be experiencing a high performance in the way that we redistribute the, the, the connection and the speeds. Yeah, but don't worry. You will have, you will have more and more devices every day. Um, this is an example that is not just a speed. Going back, for example, this is a benefit that you can have right now in your network. Because if you have access point AC, whenever you hear, whenever you hear that somebody is transmitting on the same channel as you are transmitting, this access point has to stop the transmission. So my friends, if you have 2.4 needs, an AX access point will solve the, the, the issue for you because in this technology, the 2.4 is important that you know 
that only AX technology, only Wi-Fi 6 technology will allow this transmission not to be disrupted by somebody else being transmitted on the same on the same channel. For example, if if your access point of your neighbor is transmitting in channel one and you are transmitting on channel one, you know what? AX has a technology to know that, okay, don't worry. This guy is transmitting on my same channel, but is in another cell of coverage. So this is BSS cornering. This is uh, Oscar. This this is one benefit that you can start that you can start implementing in your network right now. Even though there are no AX, but the coordination from transmission in the 2.4 for IoT devices is starting to be improved right now. Um, another thing that is going to be improved, even though your clients are not AX, is this one. You have the application, the, these 500 access points has a, a technology that are uh, going to improve every transmission based on what kind of application your device is using. For example, if the access point detects that your user is in a, a Skype conference, well, your own access point will have the capability not only to identify the, the, the application your user is, is, is in right now, but to improve the quantity of server for that application. This is another advantage that you can have right now if you implement AX, even though your clients are AC. Okay. So yeah, that that was that was a great question. Thank you very much for both questions. And so far so good. We we don't have because this this first part was kind of the of the technical and improvements. And I think if if we don't have more questions, Oscar and Erica, we can move to what you need to think before you go and, 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 and now you're very happy about those ben benefits and now you are super, super confident that your customer is going to get benefit from AX with or without the, the, those, those AC clients, but you know, you know what? Sometimes we have to stop and to think how we are going to be sure that all these benefits we covered are going to be in our customer's network before we design, before we propose the, the project components. Okay, two main things that I'm seeing a lot of customers forgetting about is, hey, for Wi-Fi 6, you need PLA 6. That's it. What is PLA6? Okay. Uh, we when we have our access point connected to a switch, normally this switch is to give power to that device. And you you must promise me that um, th this is not a super technical overview, but you have to know that. For, for every device, you have class classes, okay? Class three, class four, class five, and class six. The, 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 now you know where this PLA six come from because not just Wi-Fi six, is six power. So if you go for the high-end, high-density devices, like the 5335 and the 550 55 or 550 family you have to know that these babies are going to be needing 60 watts okay so you have to think of providing two connections with a normal poe pro switch or you have to think in, in that you will need to add to your design switches that are able to give this power six, 60 watts of, of, of for the 
okay so we we do have we do have uh, switches that are able to give you the the minimum what is uh, andre what is the minimum power required for a for a wife six infrastructure you need that you need the minimum poe plus that is 30 watts but for high-end devices you will need to provide two poe plus connection to every device or if you choose the we have switches the 6400 the 6300 the 2930 all of them are able to give you poe6 depending on the model you, you choose so please don't forget about the power for those switches because if we talk about that we have more customers transmitting and receiving at the same time of course that will have an implication of the power that the access point needs okay good power do not remember then do, do not forget sorry the minimum is poe plus minimum poe plus now for other thing smart rate okay i will open my catalog here and i will show you really quick the technology that i'm going to introduce to you this technology is is is, is known already i'm sure that you you already know this technology is known as a smart rate and what is a smart rate is smart rates are these little ASICs that these little chips that you see here, and those those chipsets are going to give the opportunity to your customer that your customer is going to have the same factor, the same cabling. For example, if your customer uses, um, let me let me get rid of this drawing. For example, if your customer has CAT 5E, CAT 5, or CAT 6, with the same cabling, with the same cabling, if your access point is smart rate capable and in your, if your switch is smart rate capable, you don't need to invest in renewing your cable infrastructure because you will be offering a speed with the same cable, I repeat, up to 2.5 gigabits minimum, minimum of transmission. Why? Because remember, now in Wi-Fi 6, if you only offer traditional connection one gigabit per second, you're going to cr create a bottleneck. That's why it's really important, my friends, it's really important to have this kind of smart rate technology in the switches Aruba you choose to connect the Wi-Fi 6 Aruba access point so you do not have any bottleneck for more users tran transmitting that over one gigabit per second. In fact, one gigabit per second was very, 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 very uh, exceeded in Wi-Fi 5. Now imagine Wi-Fi 6 will require that you take into consideration power and smart rate technologies in the switches. Okay. By the way, by, by the way, PoE, PoE 6 and smart rate are technology that were born inside Aruba, and Aruba pushed the industries to 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 make this technology a standard some other vendors i will not say number not names but you know the other vendor the other vendor what they do is to create its own technology proprietary and that's why you cannot integrate anything with anything with other vendors and in aruba we we push the industry to forge a standard now that was the technical part of the of the AC uh, of the AC versus Wi-Fi 6 overview. Remember that we have indoor access point. Yeah, we have indoor access point. We have outdoor access point. We have industrial access points, and we have the hospitality. Now everything is Wi-Fi 6. Okay, and I want to show you, and I want to pass you the link here. That is really easy. 
It's really easy to select the proper access points here in this in the in the same website of Aruba Networks. We have a nice way to 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 select. Hey, what kind of access point are 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 way are good for you? Do you have all the documentations here? Let's see. For example, do you have the documentation about switches as well? Do you see here? You see portfolio, and in the product finder. You can even say, hey, I'm trying to do access, and you know what? I want to I want to connect a fixed switch, and I want to select a, a medium, and I want to select that we are ready for multi-gigabit Ethernet. Okay, multi-gigabit Ethernet. And then my friends, you oh, you're going to have here. Uh -huh. I was selecting the wrong filters. Well, you will see all the Aruba switches that provides you that multi-gigabit technology, okay? You can do the same with the access point. You can do the same with the access point. Um, and you will find what access point will be for, for high density, for extreme density, or for entry projects. So yeah, I'm going to copy this link. Maybe Oscar or, or Erica, you can send this link to, to my friends that are connected. And this is the switch selector. And I'm going to give you the access point selector tool in the in the website for you to use. And it's nice because every time that you select in a specific model, you will have all the information you have all the information in, in, in data sheets for that model so you can be sure that you are designing the right project okay good and for the for these last minutes we have to think in something that is not wi-fi 6 but it's related to the to the security we have okay and and as i said we have this guy working with aruba which is the, this guy is a genius this his name is dan harkins he's he was one of the creators of wpa3 and and one of the masterminds behind those security improvement in the in the new networks so if you want to check his his job is is, is right amazing now what what have we we done with the security approach okay now we have wi-fi 6 and wi-fi 6 is going to give you a lot of improvement yes we saw that but what about the security for access points of the 300 family and the 500 family we now support the security standard wpa3 we now means that two years ago we started to support wpa3 but it's important that we talked about it because I, I don't see many customers talking about this with your customers. And WPA3 does not require new devices. It's important. For example, my same iPhone, when I updated my iPhone to iOS 13, I was able to provide and, and to access WPA3 networks. It will be it will be the same with you. If you, my friends, have um, Android, for example, if your Android is greater than Android 10, you will be able to support WPA3 security standards. So WPA3 is not related to uh, a new hardware. It's just firmware. Okay. Now, what was the issue with WPA3. With WPA3, we have new ways of, of secure the networks that in WPA2 was simply was not possible. The first is that do you remember when you go to a McDonald's or or, or a Starbucks or whatever hotel you want? you connect to a network and that network does not have a password because normally guest networks will not have a password. What happened if you were relying on WPA2? 
If in WPA2, if you do not have a password, you will not have encryption. I repeat, for open networks where you don't have a password, you will not have encryption. What does it mean? That every frame you sent over the air was open and anybody with the right tools, if this was a bad guy sniffing your, your air, was completely able to read that, okay? For example, I, I, will, I will give you a, a, a screen um, capture, a packet capture of, of the, you see, here we are talking about WPA2. This is a, a, a Wi-Fi capture. Okay, and, and you know what's happening? That this guy is using WPA2. And you know that some packets will be encrypted, but no, because of the Wi-Fi. Some packets will be encrypted because the user is using HTTPS or another secure protocol. But all the communication that is not encrypted in WPA2 was completely vulnerable for for any guy with uh, a sniffing packet capture to see that. For example, I can see in clear text, all the DNS or the HTTP without protection, everything was clearly visible. And that's why you have to accept the terms and conditions before connecting to an open network because they knew that WPA2 was not secure. Now with WPA3, even do you have open networks, if you have opportunistic wireless encryption, the access point and the client will negotiate encryption for every frame. So you will not have vulnerability to people see your, see your traffic in transit, okay? So all WE will work with open networks with network without passwords and you see that is important because um instant and in in mobility controllers everything from version 8.6 supports wpa 8.4 sorry supports wpa3 so wpa3 can protect your guest infrastructure yes of course okay um now if i if because if you don't believe me now see this it's, it's, it's all encrypted here all the payloads in the in the in the in the all, all the data in the payload is encrypted using wpa3 now what about what about the wpa2 is wpa2 dead no WPA2 is not out of the market. Hey, if I have people that is only WPA2 capable of connecting to my network, don't worry. You can configure your network with WPA3 and the WPA2 devices will connect the same. Will connect the same. It's completely failback compatible. In fact, for example, you remember all WE when 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 a client capable only of WPA2, he will connect to the network, and of course he will not be protected, but he will connect to the network just the normal connection in WPA2. But when you when your client supports WPA3 and you have Aruba products that support WPA3 configured your client will prefer the SSID protected. So you see, you, don't worry, you can start designing and configuring WPA3 networks if you have the access point that supports that and your customers will be protected if they are using WPA3. If they are using, using WPA2, don't worry, they will be connected to WPA2. Uh, and I think, oh, before the thank you, I have to cover one more thing. This is for open networks. But you know what happened with password protected networks? We have another another vulnerability here. I will show you right away. Um, well, I don't have it here. 
I'll put the whiteboard. Uh, okay, if you have a password protected network in WPA2, uh, any hacker can, could come in and capture your, your transmission data over there, okay? Capture this conversation and then go and try offline attacks. Offline attacks is because you record, record this conversation and then the hacker will try to break your password. And they were able to do that very easily because we have, we have software that it are able to, imagine this, having the opportunity to, to test 4,000 passwords per second. So this guy record that conversation when to apply the offline dictionary attacks and then come back and he can connect to your network. Why? Because WPA2 was vulnerable to offline attacks. Now in WPA3, if a hacker wants to apply offline attacks, he will be able to do that. But you know what? It will be pointless. So WPA3 is not vulnerable to, do, to offline attacks. Why? WPA3 in the air, the hacker will see just a number six, for example. But he has no idea what, uh, this is for human terms, okay? You imagine this, you see a number over the year, but somebody asked you to guess what was the other numbers involved in the operation? What was the other numbers involved that in the operation that came up with this six? And you know what the only the other thing? You have to think what was the operation. For example, if this six was the result of a sum, a division, a multiplication, you have to guess the operation and you have to guess the other numbers involved to get that number. So my friends, it's 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 kind of hard and 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 this information that the hacker will see over the air has no way to be traced back to the original password. That is why WPA3 is not vulnerable to offline attacks. Of course, it's vulnerable to online attacks. But the thing is that Aruba, remember, we don't do Wi-Fi, we do security mobility platforms, and, and, and it will be really easy with Aruba whips to know that somebody is trying to hack you and to react and protect you, okay? Why? Because the amount of attacks online that the hacker should perform should be so, so high, okay? So WPA3 gives you protection of offline attacks, of course, because it's not vulnerable. And WPA3 gives you protection to online attack, yeah, because the amount of attacks that the hacker will have to do will, be, will make it really easy to spot that you have something going on and to react. Okay, my friends, so that was the overview about Wi-Fi 6. If you have any question or if you want, if you want a, a technical deep dive with the technology with a customer, don't 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 contact Oscar and Eric, and we'll be hip, happy to to assist you. And if we don't have if we don't have any questions, my friends, we can go for the Amazon.